gotta keep that in there. Keep that Welcome in the back video. to the channel. Today we're working on the Supra once again. We're getting back to the Supra build. In the last video, we had the engine in the engine bay, which we did pull out. And as you can see, it is now over here back on the stand. The whole reason why we had it in the engine bay and everything was to just like test fit where lines were gonna go, make sure the wastegate was gonna fit and the manifold and the turbo. And today we're going to start working on getting the water lines fed to this turbo. So we're gonna start with the coolant pipe that runs around the back of the block on the 1JZ. The 2JZ has this as well, but the 1JZ coolant pipe is the one that we have here because we are building a 1.5JZ. Now what this does is it sits in this area right here and it feeds, if I could get it around this thing, it feeds coolant to the oil cooler here and then this port, I believe, goes to the intake manifold. But on the other side of it, there's a port that goes to the stock twins. And what we did, I took this out to Delta Vehicle Systems, we clamped it, and we just welded it shut. A job that I thought that I wouldn't be able to do because I suck with stainless, but I could have totally did it. And in fact, I could do it. And as you could see here on this spare part that I have off of a 2JZ, I did the exact same thing just clamped it and welded it shut. Now this is done with TIG, we just fused it to close it. But we're first gonna get this mounted, but what I wanna do, and the reason why this thing is all with all these plugs and pipes and everything with this gauge, we're gonna put air in this, put it up to like 25 PSI, and put it in a bucket of water to make sure that it doesn't leak. <laughs> gotta keep that in there, keep that in the video. <laughs> I built this table here that's running off the garden hose 200 feet away at the house is bringing water to the shop and it's actually working pretty well. So we're filling up the bucket here to put that pipe into it and then we'll just see if there's any air bubbles. So I don't think that the coolant system is ever really gonna see more than like 20 or 30 pounds of pressure. So we'll put 30 in it and we're going to go ahead and put this into that bucket. Now, I don't care if one of these random plugs is leaking or whatever, I, I care about this guy right here. Because if we had to fix this, let me show you where this is gonna sit on the engine. It's gonna be all the way over here, right under the manifold in this area right here is where this welded part of the pipe would actually be. So if we had to fix that in the car, the whole turbo setup has to come off and we're gonna have to be able to access that and then it's gonna be dirty because it's gonna have coolant in it. So it would just be a nightmare. All right, so you see here there's no bubbles coming out, but if you look at this guy, this guy is leaking. And this is what we would see if we did have an issue with this port that we welded up, if it were leaking, but it appears to be good. We're leaking from this flange too right here, but we're not leaking anything out of the welded up port for the stock twins. Dislocate my shoulder trying to get this damn hose off here. So for these mounting bolts that hold the bypass pipe to the block, I'm gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite into the hole. You might be wondering why I'm putting Loctite in the hole instead of, if it would come out, instead of on the bolt. Come out of there. I watched a HP Academy video and they interviewed a guy from Loctite. And the guy from Loctite said that when you're using Loctite in this kind of situation, that you should have the Loctite in the bolt hole, not on the bolt itself. So I'm gonna give that a shot and see if it makes a difference. Not like I'll ever know for this specific bolt because it's never gonna come back out, fingers crossed. 
but that is what they said from Loctite themselves. So we'll get these things torqued to 15 foot pounds and we'll be done with the bypass pipe. With the OEM water pump installed and the OEM feed to the turbos blocked off, how do we now get coolant to the new Pulsar turbo? And the way we're gonna do that is just using these ports that are already here. I believe on the Jay-Z, on, on the one Jay-Z, one of these already went to the stock twins anyway, probably this one that's capped off here. And you can see I have an AN fitting. This is a, this is a 1 8 NPT to dash 6 AN fitting where I threaded the inside hole here, and now we're gonna have that to feed the turbo. So that's gonna handle either the feed or the return, and then we need to do that same exact thing. So we have another port here, and we have this port down here, and what we can do is we can grab these with a pair of pliers and we can just wiggle those out, and what you'll get is something like, like this, where you can see this is what was already in there before. So we're going to pull these ones out. We're gonna tap this, cap that one, or cap this one, it doesn't really matter. We just have to decide which one's gonna to go to the turbo. And then this will also be threaded down here with a 1 8 MPT tap, and that's gonna have a fitting just like this guy here. And then we'll build lines um, using this kit that we have to feed the turbo. Well, I've been working on something else for the last hour to hour and a half. I thought I was gonna take a break then get back to the 2J. So I started taking out some wiring and now this is what we have. I just removed everything that you see right here from under the dash of the Supra. It was all jammed up under that panel that's on the ground right there or on the floor, all jammed up in there. Complete mess. We had fuses that were soldered to wires as, you know, accessory ignition and whatnot. Everything twisted together, just classic and how everything has been with this car so far. And the whole reason I even started looking at that is because I found um, an additional harness that was routed along the backside of the firewall right here. And so I thought, oh, I'll follow that. And, uh, you know, it routed through the inside of the fender right there into the actual cabin. And I thought, oh, this is gonna be really easy. Well, nothing is easy. So an hour and a half later, here we are. But now we're all good. Got that mess out of there. Now we can move on to the coolant lines. We're gonna be using this kit that we got from Evil Energy. So we got the whole package here. We have the fittings, we have the AN wrench, and we have the PTFE line. Now, I will not lie to you. This is the first time that I've ever put this kind of line together. So it's gonna be a learning process. I watched some videos. I don't think it's gonna be that hard. But what I originally thought that I was gonna do was, I mean, if, if you notice here, this is a quarter inch MPT, not an eighth inch MPT. I thought that I was going to tap these with eighth inch MPT. And as you can see, I actually already did in that hole right there. But the issue is that these holes are like in between one eighth and one quarter. So when you tap it with one eighth, the fittings are just a little bit loose. I'm sure they'd be fine with some sealant, but I think what I'm gonna do is actually pop this water neck off and chuck it in the drill press and drill this for quarter inch MPT. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the lower water neck here, but I'm not gonna pull off the whole water pump to do this. So we're gonna do that one on the engine. I think if we just coat the drill bit in grease that we should be able to keep most of those shavings away from the coolant passages.
the water neck is tapped and I'm glad that I went to quarter inch NPT because as I was saying, the eighth inch fittings were really loose in there. So here's a quarter inch NPT fitting here to dash six AN. And what you'll be able to see is how when we tighten this thing down, since these are tapered threads, it's gonna start getting tight about halfway through. And what's nice about that is it, in a way, helps seal itself. We're still gonna put some thread sealant on that, but see how it got really snug right there? That was not happening with the eighth inch MPT because as I said, these ports are kind of a little bit larger than what you would use to tap for eighth inch MPT, which I think is like 21 64ths or whatever. Um, and drilling this out, to fit quarter inch MPT was definitely the right move. Now we have to do the exact same thing to this port down here, and then we can get started on building the coolant lines. Just a quick tip, if you ever have to drill around an engine or other item that's allergic to, to metal shavings, you can use grease like this to capture all the chips or swarf as I think they call it. Uh, with the threads tapped, I like to use this Loctite 592 thread sealant, but there is an equivalent from Permatex that works just as well. For the PTFE line, I'm using my bandsaw to cut it, but I've seen people use a grinder or other tools too. Then it's super important to get rid of all the burrs inside of that inner lining and move the wires away from where your fitting will go. I'm also putting a heat sleeve and heat shrink on this just to make it look nice and finished, but it's probably unnecessary because the line is heat resistant anyway, but it's by the turbo and that's hot, so I wanted to take extra precautions. Then this metal collar that is called an olive is slipped over the inner line and that's basically the compression fitting that makes the seal between the two parts of the fitting. And after that, it's basically just oil everything up, tighten it up, and you're good to go. All right, the line is done. You can see we got heat shrink on there that's not heat shrunk yet, and we got our heat sleeve on there as well. Now, what you'll notice is I have this 6AN cap blocking off one end of the uh, coolant line, and on this side, I have that same gauge that we used to pressure test the other line that we installed on the engine. So I have 30 PSI in here right now. I'm gonna go ahead and toss this into that same bucket of water, make sure that there's no leaks. It doesn't look like there are, but I just wanna make sure before we heat shrink this and finish it all up. When you route turbo coolant lines, you're supposed to have the feed as the low port and the return as the high port. The coolant is supposed to flow uphill through the center housing, so I have to switch my lines in the turbo itself to achieve that, somewhat. I say somewhat because the housing is still slightly angled towards the return. I think on a 2JZ or a 1JZ, the feed is the upper neck and the return is lower near the thermostat housing. And I'm not willing to create long, goofy lines that have to loop around everything to get to the feed on the outside of the turbo, which would face the strut tower. So I'm just gonna flip it, and I think this will have to do. I mean, it's, it's going to have to work. So you can see here that I have the coolant coming from the upper water neck to the low port of the turbo, and then returning from the high port down back to the thermostat housing area. This of course all falls apart if I have the flow backwards, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the upper neck is the feed. All right, so I'm sitting here editing. Uh, forgive the crazy look, haven't even done my hair this morning. But I wanted to ask you guys a question. I was just watching the World Cup finals, not soccer, the Holly import versus domestic drag racing World Cup. And I've always loved drag racing. I was born and raised with it. Um, I've never actually done it though. I've taken a couple of my cars out to the test in tunes and stuff like that, but I really wanna build like a drag truck or something. So. 
Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I was thinking maybe like a Toyota pickup with a 3RZ or a 2JZ or something and trying to get out there and compete with these guys out in these, uh, you know, big drag racing championships. I think it'd be something cool to chase. And I haven't seen a lot of Toyota pickup drag trucks on, well, I've seen them racing, but I haven't seen a lot of builds on YouTube. So let me know what you guys would think about doing something like that.